How do you make your business fundable in 2022? That's exactly what we're talking about today. I mean, today we are going to look at the secret formula that lenders and credit issuers have that very, very few entrepreneurs even know about and how they're making decisions on three things. Should you get approved or deny credit financing? How much should you get approved for? And what kind of rates and terms should you pay? So if you want to get the most money at the best terms, you've got to get this right. You have to know exactly what they're looking for, then tee it up the exact way they want it. And when you do, it's like a checklist of things that you meet the criteria, and then you're able to get the money you need and be able to get it at the terms that you actually need it. And that's exactly what we're going to decode today. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's dive in. So let's talk about setting up your business. Look, it's a new year. Whether you have a new business or an existing one, um, what I'm going to go through today is going to basically help you set your business up for success if you ever want to get capital in the future. Look, the way that you set up the business affects the funding that you're able to get. It's your fundability. As a matter of fact, what I find is most entrepreneurs get denied for credit. They get denied financing, and they think it's because of things like their credit score and their revenue. But statistically, well more than half, the vast majority of applications that are denied are not denied because you don't qualify. They're denied because you don't meet this basic fundability criteria. You don't have the right fundable foundation that lenders and credit issuers want to see. Now, we call this fundability. Fundability is like the criteria that lenders and credit issuers have to determine if you should be approved or not. Now, look, you've been exposed to this already, whether you knew it or not. You've applied for a credit card, for example, and you've either received that dreaded message that you'll hear by mail in seven to 10 days, or you got that approval. So you and I I both know that instantaneously computers are making decisions about whether or not we're approved or not. The question becomes, what are these computers looking at? What is it that makes the determination that we get approved versus getting denied? Because if we understand that, if we understand, it's like, well, it's like an open book test, right? It's like my kid's taking an open book test versus a closed book test. If you have an open book test, well, then you could look at the question, go find the answer, and then give them the right answer. And you know it's 100% right because you're verifying it on the spot before it's submitted. That's exactly what fundability is. When you understand fundability, then you basically know secretly what lenders and credit issuers computers are really looking for, then you're able to create what they want, feed exactly that to them. And then as a result of that, you're able to get approved. Now, I'll show you how astonishing this is, is that I can tell you client after client after client comes in, gets denied for credit line, denied for loan, denied for credit card, right? Then we make one simple change, just a change here, a tweak here. And then we send them back to see what happens, and they get approve, 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 approve. And I have case studies where people got denied a loan, denied credit cards. They we fix one thing, they come in, they got the same loan approved. Then they got a no limit Amex amongst many other offers rolling in the mail. So the difference is that that's fundability. It's knowing what they want, giving them what they want, versus not knowing what they want and submitting an application and getting denied and chasing the wrong reason. You think it's your credit score, so you spent months trying to fix your credit. You think it's the revenue of the business, so you spend year plus trying to get the revenue up, when all you have to do is make a tweak here and a tweak there, and today I'm going to show you what those tweaks are in order to actually get approved. Now, if you're coming in, make sure you tell me where you're coming in from. I always like to say hello um, and give you a shout out. So please come in and take, make sure you let me know what you're coming from, what country, what state, what city. So let's start with the very basics, your business name. Now you're going to set up your business in the secretary of state. You're going to start by making sure that name is available. Um, and you're going to then set up your actual entity. Now you've got to make sure your entity is in good standing every year, about this time of year, you have to buy, uh, pay a fee. Typically in Florida, it's our, what called our annual report fee. And we've got to pay that fee or the business becomes inactive. Now, in most states, it's considerably more money to reactivate a business than just pay that ongoing maintenance fee. So if you're going to set up the business with the Secretary of State, make sure the name's available. Make sure the entity uh, is available. Once you get it, then every year you got to make sure it stays active by paying whatever that fee is. Uh, otherwise, it could cost you considerably more to reactivate that business. Now, when you're choosing a business name, there are some things to think about. First of all, you want to stay away from restricted industries and high-risk industries. You can easily figure out which ones those are by going right here to the Goog and typing in uh, NAICS, and we'll talk about NAICS codes today, but we're going to come here and we're going to type in NAICS uh, high uh, risk. Uh, well, I can't type today. I cannot type. I cannot type industries, and we'll see what pulls up. 
very first things that come up, if I type in NAICS, high-risk industries, is the NAICS high-risk in list. And then you'll see a blog post of us that breaks down everything that you need to know about high-risk industries. Now, there are two types of high-risk industries. There's what's called restricted, which means lenders just are not going to lend to that industry at all. And there's also uh, one that faces greater underwriter scrutiny. Let me give you a simple example. Restaurants are very high risk because the amount of failures in that industry is considerably higher than other industries. Um, and the over the road trucking is higher because injuries are more prevalent. Uh, pawn shops are high risk because theft is more prevalent. So there's all different kinds of reasons that make industries high risk or restricted. But you want to check that list just to make sure that the name you're choosing doesn't reflect that you're actually in a high risk or restricted industry. The name itself of your business can actually create all kinds of issues if you don't get this right. So you want to make sure that you get that address when you're naming the business. You also want to make sure that your business um, is kind of easy to find. It's, you know, you sometimes have to make a decision whether or not the name of the business has indicators of what you do um, or that it, it it or it doesn't and you're not in high risk so an example is credit suite right we understand the word credit in our name puts us into a not restricted but greater underwriter scrutiny category we're fine with that we know how business lending works we have the relationships we're willing to fight through that but it's been an interesting experiment having the name Credit Suite because there's all kinds of things we don't think about. And these are things you want to think about as well. So, for example, we cannot get set up with Experian because Experian insists that we are in consumer credit repair. Pretty crazy, right? I mean, we don't deal with consumers at all. All we deal is with businesses. And we don't even do anything with consumer credit. We've literally given them the login to our system, all of our marketing materials, website. They still have done reviews and insist that we are in consumer credit repair, even though we don't even deal with consumers. I mean, that's how crazy it is. So this is Experian, pretty big company. So it's an example of an indicator in your name. We've had I've had the bank account shut down before because we had the word credit in our name and they immediately associate us with an industry we're not in, which is consumer credit repair. We're in commercial credit building, not consumer credit repair. It's almost the exact opposite in every way, right? But it doesn't matter because the word is in our name. We have had a harder time getting merchant accounts, keeping merchant accounts, getting bank accounts, keeping bank accounts, getting set up with the reporting agencies. I can go on and on and on, but it just gives you an idea of the problems that occur when you have an indicator that you are in a high risk or restricted category in your name. So you have to kind of decide, do you want your name to indicate what you do to make it easier for your customers to find you? Uh, you also need to decide the alternative or do you just say, or, or the, the, the drawback of that is that you say what you do like Credit Suite, and, and that could create all kinds of problems. So some things to keep in mind. The other thing that's a very important, probably the most important thing I'm going to tell you today, or one of the most, is that you got to make sure your name is congruent. It's the same everywhere. Okay, Believe it or not, as crazy as this is, it's one of the number one reasons that business owners get denied is because the information in the Secretary of State records doesn't match what they're putting everywhere else. And this makes a lot of sense. As business owners, we oftentimes set up our business with the Secretary of State. The only time we ever even go back and do anything is if we file our annual reports once a year, update those. So that being said, it's very common for us to have information in Secretary of State that's outdated that we haven't updated. So you got to make sure your licenses, your corporation papers, your EIN papers, your Secretary of State records, your bank statements, your utility statements, it's all got to be exactly the same. You've got to make sure the stuff is 100% congruent. If it's not congruent, then the reality is it creates all kinds of issues with getting credit financing. Now, I'll give me as an example. I actually moved. I've been at the same residence for 16 years, um, and I actually recently moved, I'd say, six months ago. I still haven't updated my bank account with my current personal address. Now, this is a different story because it's not business association, but I'm just saying that, you know, why it doesn't affect me. I don't, I don't think about it. I didn't get bank statements anymore. They're all electronic, right? There's nothing in my world where I, I, I even think about changing it. Besides, uh, I put in the wrong zip code if I'm using a debit card. I'm like, oh, it still has my old address. So these are perfect examples of what happened in us in business. There's just things that have the wrong spelling of our name, incorrect information that we never think about going back and changing because, you know, we get our stuff electronic now, we don't physically see it, and there's just nothing that triggers us to do so. So you got to make sure that your name is congruent with everything 
Um, otherwise, this is one of the biggest, most common reasons that you're going to get denied. Now, Shauna, thanks for coming in and saying hello to everybody. Michael, thanks for coming in. Alyssa, hello from California. And we've got Kurt here from Florida. We've got uh, Sanke from Georgia. Sista, what's going on? How are you? From New York, we've got South Carolina in the house, Chicago in the house. Too many other to mention, but more from New York, from Philly. We'll be playing you soon. And Steve, I love having Steve in here. He's always in to say hello. Steve, thanks for coming in and tuning in. I appreciate you all saying hello. Okay, so let's talk about this. Again, business name, got to be the same everywhere, online and off records. Very, very, very important. Your business address, this has changed a little bit in 2022. Let me give you an update on the change. We still want to stay away from virtual addresses. A virtual address is UPS, it's PO Box, it's iPostal. These are virtual addresses. We got to stay away from that stuff. Uh, virtual offices are okay. A virtual office is typically provided through three sources, Regis, DaVinci, Alliance. Now, you might say, what's the difference between a virtual address and a virtual office? A virtual address is offered by US UPS or, or PO Boxes. These are just basically mailboxes that you're going in and renting somewhere and then using that as your address. A virtual office is a real physical location. It's an actual real location of office spaces. And if I walked into that office, I could see the number of your office on the wall. Like if you say, hey, I'm at, uh, you know, 123 Channel Side Drive, number 2507. I could go to 123 Channel Side Drive. I can walk right in there and I could see 127. I could see your unit number right there, a physical office for it. Difference between an office and an address. There's only three companies that really legitimately offer virtual offices. And those are Regis, DaVinci, and Lines. Those are still very acceptable most places. Some people accidentally use virtual addresses instead, a P.O. box, an iPostal, and get denied at places like Dun & Bradstreet, but you won't if you use a real virtual office. Now, some banks have started to make it harder to open bank accounts with virtual offices because the government makes that harder to do. But that being said, a lot of credit issuers, lenders are still openly and willingly and prefer virtual offices or real physical retail locations. Now, that being said, you also can come in and get a home address. These are becoming more, more acceptable. Since COVID, we've seen that more credit issuers and lenders are accepting home addresses than ever before. So it's okay to use a home address if you don't have the money or don't want to invest into a virtual office, but there are some sources that are still going to give you problems like Walmart. Walmart will not approve you for a corporate credit card if you use a home address, but Amazon will. So just keep in mind, some sources still don't prefer home addresses, but it is becoming, as we get into 2022 here, more and more acceptable for you to have a home address. You want to have a business phone number. Here's what I mean by that. Don't use a mobile phone. Don't use a home phone ever as your business phone number. You can't do that. You don't want to do it because those are easily recognizable by the computers lenders use as that type. Hey, home phone number, mobile phone, alert, alert. You don't want those alerts to go off. So we want a real landline for your business or a voice over IP is okay. Places like Ring Central, pieces, places like Freedom Voice, uh, lenders, credit issuers willingly accept those. But here's the caveat. The caveat is that you've got to make sure that phone number is listed with 411. This is a basic criteria that as we get into 2022, more and more starter vendors are looking at than ever before. Meaning if you want to start building business credit, one of the factors that almost every one of the starter vendors looks at is, is the phone number you have listed with 411. You got to get that phone number listed with 411. There's a great service called listyourself.net. Listyourself.net. Listyourself.net gives you the ability to list yourself there. You can't go to 411.com and list your phone number. 411.com isn't even the same as 411. You can't go to 411 directly and list your number. They organically find it when you're in places like Google being Yahoo. So set up a place on Google My Business. Set up uh, your information on being on Yahoo. Set up your information in all these places. Make sure it's congruent. And that will eventually get you in 411 or you can go to listyourself.net. Also, lenders, credit issuers, 2022 hasn't changed. They still prefer toll-free numbers. So get a toll-free number. Nowadays, you can go to Ring Central. You can go to uh, Freedom Voice. And the phone number is the same money, whether it's local or toll-free. Something that we're really seeing change into 2022 is fax numbers really aren't as important anymore. 
Okay, uh, for some reason, even through 2021, they if there's a fax number line item on an application, then lenders, credit issuers really want to see you have one. Nowadays, they don't care. They don't care. Now, I still suggest if you're going to get a phone number from Freedom Voice, Ring Central, one of these kind of sources, that you just go ahead and get a fax with it. Uh, I can go get a phone number with Ring Central, get a phone number, make it toll free, and make it a fax as well, and it's the same cost to me. So if I can get all those extra add-ons and it's the same cost, well, then it might as well as consider doing it. It's something uh, that absolutely uh, could work very well for you. Now, Steve says, I have $150,000 unsecured line of credit from a local bank, used car dealer, and today asked my banker for 50 grand more, and he said he will have it done tomorrow. No new paperwork, $200,000. That's awesome, man. And that's what happens when you get fundability right. So congratulations, Steve. I'm glad to see that you're having success. Guys, Steve comes in all the time to these trainings. He's here regularly. So what he just saying is, hey, you know, and he didn't say it directly. I mean, maybe it could be wrong here. He's saying, hey, look, I come into the trainings. I set my business up where it's fundable. I already have $150,000 line of credit. Now I'm starting with another 50 grand. So this works when you get it right. And a lot of people coming in. Hello from New York, from Georgia, from Little Rock. We got Tennessee in the house too. And I'm planning on working you guys, but I'm nervous about starting my business. Hey, if we can help you, let me know. Um, a lot out there about successfully starting a business. And when you do and are ready, we can help you get it set up the right way. Hello from the cold, cold, cold Detroit. I don't like to talk about Tampa weather around this time of year. It always seems to get me in trouble. And California is in the house. Um, and that's great. A business great guy says, hey, I was offered 60K with a home address. This is fantastic. And this is a great point. I love this. Because this is what fundability has. And, I, and I'm going to give you an actually a real world example of this, just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So the way the fundability works is this. Credit issuers have certain requirements and other credit issuers just don't have it. And a simple example of this is Walmart versus Amazon. And this is a mistake I see a lot of business owners make. A lot of business owners make the mistake and say, hey, so-and-so approved me, so I'm good. But the reality is, is that just because one source approved you doesn't mean that the others will if other things are off or different or disliked about your fundability. So let me just try to pull up. I don't know if this could blow up on me because it's real time example here. But let's pull up Uline. Uline's a great starter vendor people use to build business credit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if we can pull up some side by sides here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying about fundability is this. There are parts of fundability that I'm going to go over with you today, which you might not have set up the way that I'm telling you to set them up. And you know what? You might say, well, I'm okay because I went so-and-so and and got approved without an issue whatsoever, right? But then the problem is then you go get another denial and you don't know why because in your mind, everything is good. I mean, you, you got approved with one source. Well, this is the difference. When in, we're looking at what our business finance, we, this is the step-by-step system we use to help clients like shave years off business credit building, condense it to months. Okay, This is exactly this, the, the secret sauce of how we do it. And what I'm looking at here is a Granger. And what I'm looking at here is just simply a U-line. So I don't know if they're different or not, but we'll look. This could work. This might be a bad example. It might be a good example. Uh, let me see. Well, it's a perfect example, actually. So as we can see here with Uline, Uline wants you to have an entity in good standing, an EIN, and a business address that matches everywhere. Well, that's exactly the same here as Granger. Uh, Granger wants you to have a DMB number and a license, and so does Uline, as you can see here. They're going to ask for a bank reference here with both sources. So that's part of their underwriting guidelines. But you see here with Uline that Uline is going to specifically look to make sure that your phone number is listed with 411. And we can see Granger does not have that requirement. We can also see that Granger has a requirement that you're set up with the Secretary of State in the last 60 days or that you're more than 60 days old. And we can also see that Uline doesn't have that. Okay. We can also see that Uline wants you to have a business credit profile set up with DMB, and we can also see that Granger doesn't care about that. So the reason I show you is that this is what fundability is about. When I talk to you about fundability, what I want to do is I want to show you, hey, this is the criteria that if you meet this criteria, you're going to get check marks on the computers for these underwriters for almost every one of the credit issuers and lenders that's out there, no matter what kind of credit financing you want. Now, if you don't aren't listed with 411, guess what? You're going to come get Granger without an issue. But if you say, hey, man, I, I'm not listed with 411. I'm good now. I went ahead and got Granger. I got I got approved. I'm not listed with 411. No big deal. But then guess what? Then you go to apply for Uline. You're probably, if you're not a client, you don't have access to the underwriting guidelines. So you wouldn't know that. And guess what would happen here? You get denied. 
you wouldn't meet Uline's criteria. Now, if we come into, let's say, Phillips 76 here and look at another one, guess what? You wouldn't get this one either. And if we continue to look around here and we look at, let's say, Brex, we come to Brex, well, guess what? You would be able to get a Brex without an issue because they don't have that criteria at all. Okay, so you can see that this is exactly how fundability works, is that a lot of sources have these criteria when other sources don't. So if you make sure that your fundability is in line, well, then you can appeal to the majority of lenders and credit issuers. But if you don't, some will approve you, some will deny you, and you'll think because the approvals are okay, only to realize that you didn't get as much money as you could have. You didn't get as good of interest rates and terms as you could have. You didn't get approved with all these other sources you could have because you missed a fundability point that the ones that approved you didn't care about. So a good example of how fundability works, and I appreciate um, you bringing that in here, a business guy, because business guy is a perfect example. It says, hey, man, I got 60K with a home address. A lot of places will now approve you as we get into 2022. Other places like um, uh, other sources out there like Walmart, especially ending 2021, wouldn't do that. So again, just some things to think about here. Hello from Maryland. Chicago's in the house. Dallas is in the house as well. Virginia Beach. We don't have too many Virginia Beach ever popping in here. So thanks everybody for coming in and saying hello. Okay, so you got to get the phone number. You got to make sure it's listed with 411 as well. You need to get your EIN. It only comes for free from one place. It's called irs.gov. If you go to irs.gov, then it's 100% free to get your EIN. Other sources will make themselves out to be like the irs.gov when they're not. Then the problem is, is you get to the end of the process, they charge you money. Your, for your EIN is 100% free. You got to get this if you want to build business credit because building business credit is based on your EIN. Business credit's linked to your EIN, like personal credit's linked to your social. So some things that you want to keep in mind there as well. You also need to make sure that you have your business entity set up preferably a corporation, you can get it set up as an LLC. An LLC is an officially an entity type from the IRS. But if you're getting a sole proprietorship, for example, at least get an LLC on top of that because corporations are the number one preferred type of entity that lenders and credit issuers look at. The second is LLC. They like LLCs as well. If you are another entity type, you can go to your account. Your account can help you uh, for very little money get that changed. Sometimes you can even go to your secretary of state and get that changed as well. Business licenses. If you can get a license, get one. There are sources like Granger that will approve you for a $2,500 credit line just because you have a business license. As a matter of fact, I found that this little thing goes a long way to giving you credibility. So go get your business license. Um, you can get one sometimes in your industry. You can usually get one in your state. So for example here, if I just go in and I type in uh, Pasco County business license, then you can see that the first thing that pulls up here is a business license I can get here in, in local Pasco County, Florida. I'm actually in Hillsborough now. I'm just used to doing this search when I lived in Pasco. But the nice thing about this is, is that it costs me very little money. I can get at what used to be called an occupational license. Now it's called a business tax receipt for my county. And it goes a long way to giving me credibility. I can send this to under credit issuer and just let them know I have got this extra layer of credibility out there. It goes a long way to helping you get approved. You at least have to have the licenses you need to have. If you're a licensed plumber, for example, you got to have that license. And supplying that goes a long way to lenders and credit issuers versus them dealing with a plumber that doesn't have that same license. Make sure your business bank account is set up. Make sure that it is in your business name. Don't use a personal bank account. Look, I'm still surprised to see people that haven't set up a business bank account. It's basically no cost to set one up. Very little money needs to be deposited to set one up. And here's why it's important. If there's one thing you could do to get funding, this really is one of those things, if not the most important. Because there's a lot of funding out there. Merchant cash advances, cash flow financing, credit lines from places like Blue Vine and Fundbox, for example, and on and on and on that are just based on you having consistent cash flow. But you have to have that money going to a bank account that's in your business name. So set up your business bank account. A lot of the sources I just showed you will look, ask for business bank references. You don't have that if you don't have a business bank account, period. You just don't have it. So you got to make sure that you come in and that you set up a business bank account and start running any money from the business through there because that alone six months down the road is going to open up a lot of funding opportunities and it's going to go a long way to help you get credit financing because a lot of them are going to ask you for a business bank reference. Set up a professional website, super simple to do. You can go to places like monstertemplate.com. I talk about them all the time because I just, I, I like them. I, I just think, 
that monster template, and there's probably many of these out there, but monster template, I like them because, or template monster, because template monster is, you know, look at all these websites. I mean, I can get pretty good website themes here that look really professional, really good. And look how cheap they are. They're just ridiculously cheap. And if I were to buy a template, then I could go to a place like Fiverr here, or I could also go to Fiverr. I could also go to Upwork. I'm going to give you two solutions here. And Upwork and Fiverr are really good places. You can find really cheap people uh, or really cheap work to be able to get the website set up. You pay a hundred bucks to get the website less. You spend a hundred to 200 bucks to set it up. Two to 300 bucks, you got your whole website set up. It, 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 no, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you, you can't go another way. We're spending $35,000 to get our website done, but we're an eight figure business, right? So we, it got us this long to pay that much money to get one done. So you could get hundred thousand dollars plus for a website. If you want, I just am saying, if you don't have a website set up, it's super cheap to do so. And then you want to go set up the website in a place like GoDaddy. Now I like GoDaddy. They're my favorite source for this. Um, I'm a huge fan of their customer service, probably one of the best customer service companies I've ever got a chance to work with. And GoDaddy, you can get the hosting done for less than a hundred bucks. And they also give you an email that goes with the domain. So let me give you an example. My domain is creditsuite.com. My email is info at creditsuite.com. Pretty simple. They're congruent. What you want to stay away from is you want to stay away from Gmail, Yahoo, et cetera. That hasn't changed. It's been the same for years and years and years. It's still the same now. Those kind of email addresses will get you flagged and oftentimes denied. Stay away from Wix domains. And what I mean by Wix and, and Weebly and these other type of sources is that these guys, you don't own your domain. Like if your name is ABC Company, then you're at abc.wix.com. You don't want to have a domain at, at Wix.com. It just doesn't make you look professional. No legitimate, seriously legitimate companies have this that are larger privately or publicly owned. And you want to stay away from that. So you want to go and get your own domain, own hosting in a place like uh, GoDaddy that you're able to get that set up. Now, um, that being said, beyond the fundable foundation, there's other things that you want to consider here as well. One is NAICS codes. One of the biggest mistakes I see entrepreneurs make. This is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger deal as we get into 2022. As more business types come about, then in lenders and credit issuers are trying to separate business types more than ever. And they do so based on what's called an NAICS code. And in the ICS code is officially the North American Industrial Classification System. Now you know we would call it in the ICS. Similar and replace the old SIC codes that used to be out there. It's used by North America in general. Okay, actually even. Um, so we see Canada, for example, uses this as well. And an in the ICS code basically is used to, to designate what industry you're in. It's used by our government to get economic data of new industry formation and how many businesses are in each sector. It's used by the SEC. It's used by the IRS to actually look at your expenses and see if the expenses you're claiming in your category is similar to other people in your category. It's also used by lenders and credit issuers to designate high risk versus low risk industries. And it's used by the credit bureaus to group you and compare you to other people in your industry. So a simple example here is that, well, I'll give you a real example here. So, uh, and I'll, I'll show you an actual commercial credit report and I'll show you how this can actually blow up and be an issue for you. So the reason that this is important is the credit bureaus have multiple score categories that they'll put you in and they'll put you in these score categories based on the industry that you're in. Now, the problem with that is, is that if you're in the wrong industry, if you've selected that you are in the wrong industry, then the problem is, is you could see something like this. So here's an NAIC, or here is, uh, let me see if this is actually a good example. Probably not the best example. So let me give you a secondary example. This is a better one. Okay. So this is a real Experian commercial credit report. Yes, I can show you people's commercial credit report because you can go get it if you want to. Okay. One of the things you need to know about business credit, right? It's publicly accessible. Anybody that wants your commercial credit reports can show it. Um, back in the initial election between Clinton and Trump, I pulled both of their company's credit reports so everybody could see, like, here's Clinton Foundation, here's Trump Organization, here's your actual commercial business credit reports. It's accessible to anybody that wants it. Okay. So that being said, let's look at this. Now, 
see that we see a credit risk score here and tell score. This is the main credit score used by Experian. It's the main credit score used by credit card issuers. If you want a credit card, then Experian is the main credit bureau that the lenders are using to determine if you should be given one. They also use it to determine your credit limit recommendation here and your scores will determine your interest rates, right? Okay, so we see here that this person is medium risk they're not high risk. They're not low risk. They're medium. That means they're going to pay a higher interest rate than a lower risk industry would. And we can see here that the reason is, is that they don't like the industry of the actual business. So the credit scores in the business will be lower if they don't like the industry that you're in. And there's all these comparison scores that compare you to other people in your sector. Well, if what you're if you're giving the wrong NAICS code, if you're not even associated with the right industry, all kinds of problems get created because you're being judged in an, against an industry that you're not even in. So you've got to make sure that you get this NAICS codes and risks right. If you don't get this this right, this can become a serious issue. Now, the best way to do this is we just go right here to NAICS.com. Okay, and we go right here to the top right, find our NAICS code, and we figure out what code we're in. And here's why it's important. I could say I'm in construction. That sounds common. Hey, what industry are you in? I'm in the construction industry. But if we click construction here, what we see is we see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. We see 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 42. We see 42 different category, subcategory designations in construction. Now, most people in construction are going to walk in and tell a lender or credit issuer they're in the construction industry. When you do that, you're now letting a lender decide between these 42. You don't want that to happen. What you want to do is you want to know your NAICS code. You want to know that you are in non-residential building construction. And when I fill out an application and it asks me what industry I'm in, I'm going to say non-residential building construction NAICS 2362. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, there's no question they can't misdesignate me. Because they can clearly see that I know exactly my industry code in this. I also want to make sure that the credit bureaus are set up with the correct information. My business credit reports reflect it. I also want to make sure as well uh, that my tax returns reflect it, even if I have to go backwards and update that information. So some things uh, to be able to think about as you go through that. Now, Willie says, hey, I'm up there. I got Best Buy at 8000 Awesome, man. Staples at 8000 Dell at 8,000 or a Dell at 7,500, 25,000 on equipment leasing. I'm flying. Thanks, Ty. Guys, this is just what happens when you do what I'm saying here. And get me, don't get me wrong. I'm not just some, you know, guy that just fired up YouTube and I'm sitting here teaching you about what I learned in my experience of starting a business and getting credit cards. We helped over 42,000 last year. I haven't even got the count going into January of 2022, but we've helped over 42,000 people through this process. So like we know what works, what doesn't work. If you tweak this, you get approved. If you tweak this, you get denied. Uh, and that's why people like Willie that follow are able to come in and get these results. Karen, thanks for coming in from Atlanta. Um, I have a title producer license in Maryland. That's awesome. Any kind of license you can get, I find is one of the best ones to actually be able to get. Um, and Tonda said, so do you have a download slide for this content? We don't. The screen's a little blurry. It shouldn't be blurry. If you're uh, watching this right now, my screen is crystal clear. It might be the screen that you're watching on. Um, you can go back and play this back on Facebook, maybe get better resolution there. But Or, or if your YouTube is not working. Also, YouTube, if you're watching, if you go down to settings on YouTube, you can adjust the resolution. and You can adjust it to as high as your screen will allow. Uh, and you can get this in 1080p HD, so it should be clear. As of slides, we don't give these slides out at this point. We might do this a little bit later this year. We do give it out to our partners. So if you're a Credit Suite partner, our partners get this because they use this for marketing purposes. Uh, so the playbacks are out there, but not the slides at this point, but that might be something that we change a little bit. And Critical Chris says, what's the difference between bankable and fundable? It's basically the same thing. In the context of business credit, do they basically mean the same thing? They mean the same thing. Okay, uh, I, I personally say credibility, fundability, bankability, 
it, it's all pretty much the same thing. Lendability, uh, it's all just different phrases. We just kind of called it fundability uh, many years ago, and or I think a decade plus ago, and that's what we've went with since. But it also me it all means exactly the same thing as to answer your question. And Kurt says, is there a way to tell the best code for a common code like a consulting? It's just looking through the list. Look through the list, find the best designator that defines you, and that's what you want to go with. And again, you want to avoid the ones I showed you earlier on that list of high risk. That becomes important as well. So we want to avoid those high risk um, industries or restricted industries. And this is why risk matters, right? I mean, I'm not going to go through this, but the bottom line is whether it be angel investors, venture capitalists, crowd funders, private investors, whether it be banks, it, it, risk matters because as I mentioned, it, it, it's three things. Will you get approved or denied? How much money do you get? What rates and terms will you pay? It, that's what happens. So I see people that will come into me and say, hey, um, you know, I should have talked to you. I went and applied for a credit card and I got approved. So that's good. And my question is always to say, to, to always the same two things. Do you know you got the best interest rate? And they're like, no, no idea. And I'm like, do you know that you got the highest approval you should have gotten? Nope. That's the problem is that, you know, you got to keep in mind that the goal here is to not just get you approved, get you approved for the most money at the best terms. And if you're not positive that you're getting approval versus denial, getting the most money at the best terms, you want to follow this because all we're doing is putting together tens of thousands of experiences and saying, hey, look, here's the commonalities of what we found that lenders and credit issuers are really looking at. Okay, So you've got to set up that fundable foundation first. That's a very important thing to do. If you do that, then you've at least set up the foundation the right way. Now, that's not the end of it. Fundability has over 125 factors that we've actually been able to find. So when we look at lenders and credit issuers, we look at what gets people denied, what gets people approved. What we found is that fundability is really the key um, to all of it. But at this, we found over 125 fundability factors all in all. We call this our fundability matrix. Uh, that lenders and credit issuers are looking at. There it is. Oh, I, don't know what, I, don't know what's, I don't know what happened here. It looks completely blank, though. We're going to try and pull this up again and see if I can pull up a better uh, view of, of fundability here. But I'll pull up that fundability matrix here as I'm able to go through and, and show you. But again, there's over 125 fundability factors. I'll get you a free fundability consultation here, as a matter of fact, as we wrap up. So that's it. Now, Credit Line Hybrid, if you're looking for funding for the new year, great program. It's our most popular in 2021. If we look at all the funding we work with, we work with over 1,000 different uh, lending sources. We work with every legitimate major kind of funding program that's out there. And of all the ones, if we look at all the approvals, the thousands of, of approvals that we get, uh, this is the number one that we found. So if you're real, looking to get money to start the year, then you want to consider something like Credit Line Hybrid. Uh, the Credit Line Hybrid is a great way to be able to come in and get financing. You get 0% rates. You get, are able to come in and get no doc financing. So you're able to get no doc financing as well. Um, and you're also able to get cash out at 0%, which is still pretty cool as well. Um, and you can get it as a startup. You can get it as a high-risk industry. All you need is good personal credit, 680-plus type FICO score. If you don't have a 680-plus type FICO score, then you can work with a guarantor that does. So there's a lot of guarantors out there, people around you that could actually serve up as a guarantor. And if you are able to tap into their credit, you're able to get financing. I'm still trying to pull up this fundability matrix. I do not know. My computer is not cooperating with me today. I'm still working on it. Then you're still able to get approved. So uh, up to $150,000 of credit lines. A lot of them report to the business credit reporting agencies, which goes a long way to helping you be able to get credit financing. Um, and uh, again, you're able to get approved even if you're high risk, even if you, uh, without documentation, even if you have no cash flow, even if you're starting a business, even if you need to use somebody else's credit, a really good program to get approved. By the way, here is that fundability matrix. And this goes an idea to show you how complicated it is. But what we do here at Credit Suite is we come up with these kind of matrices to really map out for our internal team. And this is why you don't usually uh, see any of this stuff that's published out there. The reason is, is because it's for us internally. It's for us to help our clients know how to get them improved. And we have these for business funding. We have these for business credit building. Uh, which now we've all discovered together that it's going to take my computer a minute to pull these up. But again, uh, I covered some of the basic foundational things, some of the basic foundational elements of what we're looking at when it comes to uh, business fundability.
But keep in mind, business credit is even more complicated. There are hundreds and hundreds of factors. So when I'm on here teaching these trainings, keep in mind that it would take too much to teach you on all 125 in one setting. We'd be here for hours and hours and hours. So if you're tuning into us, this is the kind of stuff that we're covering. We're dissecting this stuff. We're looking at your check systems credit report, how it works. Now, by the way, this is blurry because I'm super zoomed, zoomed in. We're looking at LexisNexis credit report, how it works. Uh, the credit bureaus like this that the lenders pull and make all kinds of decisions about you that you might not even know. Have you ever seen your check systems credit report? Have you ever seen your check systems credit score? Did you know that you have a credit profile and score that lenders and credit issuers are using that looks at how you manage your bank accounts that they're using to make decisions about you? This is the kind of stuff that we cover here at Credit Suite just to be able to give you the information you need uh, to succeed into 2022 and beyond. As a matter of fact, speaking of next time in trainings, we're going to be covering vendor credit accounts. So we're going to be looking at how you can start building business credit with what we call tier one or starter vendors because business credit quality, Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, Experian, you have a Dunn's number. All of this stuff is also very important to your overall fundability. So we're going to be diving in. We're going to be talking about this stuff next time that we get together. And don't forget, if we can help you along the way in 2022 as you're getting funding, let us know. We never charge you a dime of money to get any kind of loan or credit line. Don't get me wrong. We've got a business credit building program that will cut years off the business credit building process that does have an investment involved, but we never charge you a dime of money to get funding. So if you ever want to get funding, you can let us know. And don't get me wrong. I mean, if you're calling this up and you have no Dunn's number and a 520 credit score and you don't have any kind of collateral and you're just starting your business, you're not going to get loans. A lot of business owners are trying to get loans and credit lines and they call source after source after source trying to get money when the reality is you're not going to get money unless if you don't have a lendable strength. But we can then talk to you about business credit. We can build a little lendable strength through business credit. So keep in mind, there's a lot of things like not having good credit, starting a business and not having collateral or any cash flow to verify that make it really tough to be able to get financing. So we're not miracle workers. But what we'll do in those cases, even if you can't get financing, is talk to you a little bit about business credit building. So that way we can have a solution to help you get the money you need in 2022. Did you get value here? If you got value, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe as well to keep an eye out on our future trainings and give us a call. To give us a call for a free consultation, what happens on this consultation is that we will actually come in and do a fundability assessment. We'll figure out what's wrong with your fundability and then we'll help you fix it to be able to help you have the best chance of getting money into 2022. Now we help get your business credit reports for free, go over those tips, tips and tactics to improve business credit, do a funding qualification. A lot of stuff happens on that call for free. But the biggest thing from this training to take away is we will do a free fundability assessment with you to tell you about what's wrong and help you fix those things so you're able to come in and get approved. Now, uh, Kathy says, how do you tell which codes are the lowest risk? You don't tell which ones are low risk. But if you just Google, as I showed in the beginning of this training, high risk NAICS, you'll see the ones that are high risk that you actually want to avoid, okay? And DL says, why did you skip my question? I didn't see your question, DL. Uh, and I'm dealing with a lot going on in the chat right now. But if you do come in and uh, type in the question, I'm already trying to scroll back and find it. So it's going to be easier on all of us if you just type it in. But just so you know, DL, I didn't see your question, which is why I didn't answer it. Uh, I'm scrolling back through the chat. You guys kind of keep in mind, that when I actually am working this way, I've got YouTube, LinkedIn, and multiple Facebook group, groups and pages all going into one chat. Okay, and, and DL says, hey, they don't let you see those scores. Navy Federal Credit Union uh, won't let you see your internal score, which is the same as the bank score from other banks. Uh, that's actually a little bit different. Um, actually, there's two kinds of bank scores. There's one that's called a bank rating that they use. You'll never see your bank rating. Your bank rating uh, is either in the fours or the fives. You need a low five to be able to get approved. I've got training just on that on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com forward slash uh, youtube.com forward slash credit suite and just type in bank rating, I did a whole training on bank rating, everything you need to know on how that works. The second kind of credit score that looks at your banking history is called check systems and absolutely check systems. You can get your check systems credit report. You can get your check systems credit score. Uh, we do this for our clients. We help our clients get LexisNexis reports and scores as well as check systems reports and scores. And if you want further training on check systems, you can go to youtube.com forward slash credit suite and be able to get that as well uh, there. And a KJ Notary Services, I have Granger. Do I need to call them? Uh, to tell them? No, I wouldn't unless they, and well, you want a higher credit line. 
if you want a higher credit line, then go to them and say, hey, if I give you my business license, can I get a higher credit line? And that definitely uh, may help you be able to be able to get even higher amount than what you have. So don't forget to give us a call for a free consultation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on our next training where we talk about starter vendors and how to get 22, 2022 started out the right way by building your business credit profile and score, which is the key to getting the most money at the best terms. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we're talking about exactly what you need to know to be able to get started building business credit.